Hi, welcome everyone to this edition of Kingdom Flavored Talk. Well, as a Christian coach, I love to share what God is up to in this world. And as a Christian author, I'm totally inspired by people who impact the world with goodness. Well, my very special guest today is Betty Lara, and she is here to share a story of hope. Welcome, Betty. Thank you for having me, Laura. This is uh, amazing, and I'm looking forward to our time together. Well, Betty, honestly, so many people already know you, um, and I know that so many know that you are the executive director of Glory House of Miami. Um, would you share what Glory House is and what it does? Sure, of course. Um, well, we're a nonprofit faith-based organization, and we provide a safe space for adult survivors uh, to come and to get healed and to restore. So basically we work with uh, survivors that are 18 plus, and we not only provide healing and um, restoration, but we also provide uh, services, many services that they need. And that's actually how I first met you. I met you uh, while yes. I was chaplaincy director at Agape, and I was invited into the CEO's office uh, to come and meet you. And that was my first time, and it was memorable. And the Lord has kept our paths uh, knit together. Um, you know, one yes, of the, that was, that, I think that was I, was, I think that was a divine appointment. <laughs> I definitely agree. Because, you know, you don't always remember the first time you meet a person, you know, especially when it was, you know, a number of years ago. Uh, but there's a handful where I absolutely do remember that first appointment, you know, that that opportunity, a divine appointment. And yeah. that's true for you. You know, um, after getting to know you a little bit, I got to meet your husband, quite a fascinating man. <laughs> He is cut from a completely different cloth. He is a physician. Uh, would you share a little bit about him and what, what it is that the two of you do together? Yes. Well, um, I uh, met Renee 11 years ago this December. Well, no, I'm sorry. September. September this year. And um, we got married in December 11 years ago. And uh, first of all, I want to say that he is a radical lover of God. And you, you know, you, you could see it. I mean, he just loves Jesus. He does. And, uh, you know, one of the things that I have loved about my marriage with Renee is that he lifts me up to, uh, you know, to just, you know, go higher and deeper with Jesus. So he is the priest of our home. And, you know, and we're going to talk about this, I'm sure, about two horrible relationships that I had in marriages, uh, he was, he's completely different. And um, uh, Renee has a pretty powerful story. He's written uh, three books uh, and uh, he really has a passion for healing and deliverance. And he actually uses uh, the healing in the office. So he not only does allopathic medicine, but also he actually prays for his patients and they get, he they get healed. Um, and then, of course, we love, you know, to go to the nations. Uh, we have an orphanage that we support in Africa with 175 children there. And they also have survivors there. So uh, we love a lot of the same things. You know, we, we, we're totally different, right? Totally different. You know, he's like um, oil and I'm like vinegar. Uh, but when Jesus is the center of any relationship, it just works. It, it really works. So he is my priest. He's my best friend. He's funny. Uh, he's very, very funny. And uh, he is a giver. And I love that about him. I thought I was a giver. Man, he just, <laughs> he just runs around circles around me. So, you know, there's many qualities uh, that I like about him. But really what attracted me to him is the love that he has for Jesus. Well, you know, um, I'm going to put in the show notes, uh, his information because wouldn't that be something listener to have a doctor who's not only like on point you know with what's going on with your health but actually believes in the power of jesus christ to heal you yeah. <laughs> and yeah. will you know pray over you pray with you well you know it's you know i also too have a love story with my mr wonderful you know jim donnie and i have to laugh and chuckle you know when i married him i thought that you know i was pretty mature in many areas of my life until 
I had myself to contrast against him. And I was like, oh, girl, you've got some room to grow. <laughs> so I totally get what it is to be, you know, happily married to the man that God has provided for us. Well, you know, I was, to, I was really fascinated at some point in our friendship to discover that you are an author. And I didn't even learn that from you. I learned it from somebody else we knew in common. And she was sharing her excitement about your book. And I, of course, wanted to get the book. I did get the book. And I just want you to share, you know, um, tell me about your, tell us about your book. Yeah, well, uh, it's funny that you say I'm fascinated with your book. I never thought I would write a book, to be quite honest with you. And uh, little did I know that I was going to get the title, the Holy Spirit downloaded the, the title of it. And I said to God, really? Are you really serious? I thought it was going to be you know, more spiritual. And uh, because it is about spiritual things, but uh, I have a pretty... Um, powerful story in my life where at 55 years old, I ended up divorced and with $50 in my pocket. So the name of the book, uh, or in my bank account, whatever you want to say, the, the, the title of the book is kind of funny. It's $50 at 55. I was had $50 at 55 wow. starting life all over again with Jesus. Now, what most people don't know about me, and I don't like to talk about it because I don't know, I don't know why, uh, is that I come uh, from wealth. My ex-husband, you know, was a millionaire. So mm -hmm. if you're like a regular, you know, middle class person, of course, that's going to be a shock, right? You, you know, you have your family, you live in a middle class, uh, you know, lifestyle, you know, you have, you know, people that you hang around with. And, and so all that, when divorce happens, I know you, you went through it, Laura, just your whole world crumble, crumbles, right? But when you are a millionaire and you end up with $50, that's a shock. I mean, anything is a shock, right? But that's a shock. I mean, I went from, you know, driving very expensive cars, living in million dollar homes, uh, you know, taking $30,000 you know, vacations in a wow. week to $50 in my pocket. And what was I going to do now? Right. Um, and so uh, it's interesting because not that having wealth is, is not good because if I had the wealth that I had then now, and I, you know, what, with what I know now, right. I would use it totally different. Not that I, I used it for bad things, but I would have used it totally different. But when you don't have you get to see the miracles of God. You get to see him as a provider. Uh, I mean, I had to move into an apartment. I didn't have down payment. I had a car that I had to get rid of that I could not afford. And on and on and on it went. I mean, I just had to reshift my life to, to, to nothing. Uh, and so the book... Um, you know, of course it talks about, you know, the finances and that's why I think the title, cause people are, are, you know, that people are drawn to, you know, money and prosperity and that kind of stuff. But ultimately the end of my book is about the greatest treasure that I found, which is Jesus <laughs> and, you know, uh, and what he did for me. And, uh, you know, so he said, it's, it's basically my testimony. That's what it is. And so uh, it's a very short book. You can, you know, get it at Amazon. And now I'm working on another one, which I'll talk to you about it later because. Okay, um, good. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, later as in this, as in this. Yes, interview. as in oh, this okay, interview. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know if it meant like someday over coffee, I'll give you some bit. No, I'm glad. We're going to hear it hot, hot off the press. Yes. Okay, so, so take us a little bit to the beginning of this particular story of like $50 in your was it 50 or $55? $50 at 55 years 50, old. $50, everybody. Listen, no matter what situation you're in today, right? This is why Betty's here. She wants to inspire you with hope that with God, all things are possible. When Amen. a woman goes from being a millionaire on Thursday to only $50 in her pocket on a Friday, right? That's like a screeching um, to halt, you know, reality. And yes. she can speak to that. So Betty, when that happened, were you um, following Jesus? Were you a Christian? 
yes, I was following Jesus. I, uh, I, I came to know the Lord at 38. Mm -hmm. Um, but, uh, you know, and I went to church, Bible study, mission, you know, work, read the Bible. Mm -hmm. Uh, but something happened because I had already gone through one divorce. This was my second divorce and I don't wish divorce on anybody. I think death and divorce are, are the, one of the most horrific things, traumatized things that we can go through. Um, but I had already gone through a lot of healing, uh, internal healing uh, through that marriage. Um, and I, uh, I was in community. So um, I just sought more healing. Um, I sought, uh, you know, the, the community that, you know, came alongside of me. I also, during that time, I actually served because um, you can take your pain and you can trans God can transform it into a pulpit for others. So even during that season, I said, no, Lord, I can't just sit home and I just can't sulk and I can't just be have self-pity. I, I know you and I know that you will help me. And I just, every, I mean, it's like, <laughs> I can almost say that every day I saw a miracle, you know, from God, uh, just, just the way that he provided. And I'm not just talking about finances, just provided people, providing a place of healing. That year, I even went on a mission trip to Cuba uh, with no money. Uh, and, you know, it, and mission trips cost money. Yes. yes and someone, so. someone gave me, you know, uh, you know, the, the money for that. And, um, and I, I remember, like you, you and I are talking right now, I remember walking out of my house, um, the Lord told me January 3rd, and um, I met Renee that year, my husband, my, my present husband, in September, and I was married in December, and I said that I would never marry again. <laughs> you, just, you just didn't tell God that, because <laughs> God has other plans for his children. Amen, amen. <laughs> So, um, you know, it's, it's a process. I'm not saying that it's easy. No. Uh, it's, it's definitely not easy, but, uh, you know, God is so faithful, Laura. He is really faithful and you have to hang on to him. And I hung on, I, I clung on to him like, like if death depended on it. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, and I always say that, uh, you know, times of trouble, you have to go to Jesus. I mean, who else can help you? Who else can do miracles? Yeah. Who else can heal your heart? Who else can restore what the enemy has stolen from you? Mm -hmm. And so, um, and, you, and mature you through it, right? Because I remember, you know, after the death of my husband, you know, I, I think of it as being like facing the giants in the land. And I remember at one point I was led by the Lord to open up a business and I did, and everybody else was making money, but me. <laughs> and what was awesome about that awesome and awful was that I would sometimes Betty have to leave my restaurant in, go out the back door and I would have to just bend over double and keep reciting scripture, especially the one in Philippians, right? Be anxious for nothing. nothing. I, and so, you know, it's like when we're going through a traumatic time, you don't realize how, you know, when Christ is invited into that, not only are we going to come out of it and come through it, but we're going to be refined in the process. And I, and I want to hear a little bit more about the book because I know that that's been a part of your process and, and a part of why I wanted to bring you on today was to, you know, inspire hope, right? Mm -hmm. Hope means, you know, having a confident expectation of a desired outcome. And yes. I say to the listener, you know, sometimes we think of hope as like, you know, crossing our fingers. That's the way even Christians use it. But, yeah. you know, the Bible says that there are three things that will always remain faith, hope and love yeah. and hope is having a confident expectation um, yes. of a desired outcome why because he's promised us he promised betty that he would work it for her good yes. so like you're saying it's a process it's not all about financial but i will say this is that you know somebody listening today it might be the light bill that you have to pay and so it's very financial to you and mm -hmm. you know betty's experience and my experience as a widow is that god will show up and amaze you if you will invite him in see yes. betty had already invited him in so was your whole point of of penning that book because you know as an author i understand writing a book is not easy a lot of no. times people think it's a simple thing there's a lot to it right 
In fact, right now I'm coaching someone to write their first book and they're like, you know, the, the first meeting, they're like, oh my gosh, you know, I'm giving her little spoonfuls, right? But she's like, there's a lot to this. So Betty, I know how much it takes to write a book. What was your ultimate goal in sharing this story? Yeah, I, you know, my heart has always bring to, to give hope. My, my life purpose is to lift up people. My life, my life is, is I want to see people uh, into their purpose and destiny. I want to see people uh, excel. I want to see people, uh, you know, just, uh, you know, just have a, an amazing relationship and trust in the promises of God. And it's funny that you said that about, you know, you bending over and quoting the word of God. I, if I tell you, Laura, how many times throughout my life I have had to ha do that because I was depressed, mm -hmm. because I wanted to take my life, because I wanted to quit, because I wanted to give up, because I just did not have the strength to continue. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I'm talking about all the good things, but there's also, you know, not so, so much the good things. But in all things, God works, as Romans says, God works together. All things work together for his good. So, you know, of course, I, I didn't want to be divorced twice. Uh, you know, I also had a horrible, you know, uh, teenage life. Um, I, I come from divorced parents. My, you know, my father... Uh, you know, abuse me. Uh, but all that pain, right? All that, those traumas, look where God has me now, working with survivors of human trafficking. If you would have told me that, Laura, you know, I don't even know, maybe 10 years ago, I would have said, you're crazy. I have no experience whatsoever. But you know what my experience has been? My experience has been going through these difficult times and knowing that God has can pull me through, that his promises are yes and amen, that he's pulled me through the worst, obviously not like a survivor of human trafficking, but I have seen even their lives, it changed dramatically and transformed because of the promises of God and because we hang on to what he says, not to what's here, not to the circumstances that we're going through, not to what people say. We got to be in the word, in the word and believe the word. It's like you said, faith is the connector. Faith is, you, you can read the word of God all day long, but if you don't have that faith to connect to what he says, I, I, I won't make it. <laughs> I won't make it. You know, one of the things, and I'm so glad you brought up about feeling, you know, suicidal and things like that, because, you know, it's a subject that people don't often talk about. And I think it's going to, you know, be an opportunity today for special prayer for somebody that's listening that is in a, a place um, or maybe going to find themselves in a place very soon where life looks completely foreign to them. And, and they may be so afraid or so brokenhearted that those same kind of thoughts, you know, come to them. Um, but, you know, one of the things I love to help people connect with is what you're saying. I say it a little differently, but I hear what you're saying. And, and what I hear you saying is faith is a movement. Now, yes. you know, now, what Betty's saying is read the word, absolutely read the word. But, you know, even Jesus said, it's not just being a, you know, a listener, right? It's being a doer. A doer. You know, I always say, because it's so true, the Bible is so prophetic. You think about when Jesus would be ready to heal people, right, Betty? He would say, stretch forth your hand. It's like, well, wait a minute, my hand is withered. <laughs> or the, you know, the Bible would say, you know, Jesus says, pick up your mat and go. It's like, well, wait a minute, I'm crippled. No, no, no. See, there's something about when you make a movement, it's in the making the movement. So, you know, Betty was saying like how she went to go volunteer. It's like her life is falling apart, but by faith, she says, I'm going to go serve somebody else. And somehow something supernatural happens in the life of the believer. It happens in the life of the unbeliever too, but what happens then is they don't give the glory to the Lord and they don't grow in that way, right? They don't, right. It's not even counted unto them as righteousness as the way Christ counts it in the life of a believer. So Betty, thank you that you know, you're know you pointing out a very important thing that people often miss is that you gotta connect your faith 
to doing something. And if that means stepping out, if that means worshiping, lifting your hands, even that act itself is an act of surrender and yielding even in and of itself. Yeah, faith without works is dead, right? And, uh, you know, I, I did, you know, I said yes to the Lord to work with survivors of human trafficking in fear, in fear. <laughs> I'm not equipped. I, I don't have what it takes, but you, you have to step out. You have to step out in, in faith. And that's, you know, that's so, so important uh, in everything that we do, Laura. Well, I like how you emphasize have to, because there's a lot of fear involved. Mm -hmm. Right. I, I, I know that um, somebody probably planted this image in my mind, but I'm going to share it for you and the listener is, um, is like picture like a, you on a tightrope, right? Mm -hmm. but then I could see the hand of God underneath that tightrope, but it really wasn't very far underneath the tightrope. And so here I feel sometimes like I'm on a tightrope. I was like, oh, you know, I see myself over the Grand Canyon and it is except God's hand is underneath us all the time. And it's not even, you know, very far from where I am. So if I fall, I fall like a foot <laughs> or two, you know, so stepping out in faith. And I have a feeling that there's going to be somebody who hears this that really needs to hear like, okay, Betty, okay. My life is just blown up in my face. Mm -hmm. My husband or my wife has left me. I'm 55. You know, this isn't the way I expected it to be, you know, Betty, Give me something to hold on to today that you did that I can replicate. Yeah. Well, I think um, I think mentorship is really important. Other than you know spending time you know with the Lord, um, you know reading the Word, uh, you know praying, worshiping, all those things are you know just part of our time with the Lord, right? It, you know the Lord is not. You know, we don't, we, we can't put them in a little box, right? So worship is being with him. Um, you know, if you have a prayer language, that's, you know, that's honoring him, uh, reading the word, meditating on the word, resting in his presence, right? Um, but also community is important. Yes. And mentorship is important. I've had mentors. Uh, I wish I would have had mentors, Laura. Um, earlier in my life, um, I, I started, you know, later with, with mentorship. And I heard a really powerful uh, statement about mentorship. Mentorship is a person, you know, obviously a person that's mature and centered, you know, in Christ, right? You want to have a person that you see fruit in their lives, right? Mm -hmm. But the, the statement that really stuck to me says, mentorship will help you collapse your time collapse your time mm. in your uh, learning, in your maturity, in, in your growth. Why? Because let's just say you and I, right? Let's say that we mentor people. You've gone through major stuff in your life as I have. So there's an impartation that we can give. It's just a, a, it's a natural thing, right? It's a spiritual thing that we can impart into people and with the knowledge and the experience and the trials that we have gone through, when we impart that, then it collapses the time that that other person in front of us that we're mentoring doesn't have to go through. Yeah. And so mentorship is super important. And, you know, of course, community. So those are just some of the things that I, and, that I did. And then serve, because there's always someone worse than you. Mm -hmm. There's always someone worse off than you. Well, that's actually amazing counsel because when we are going through a very difficult time, we tend to want to isolate. Mm -hmm. And really what you're saying is the complete opposite. And I completely agree that we need to be in community. And, you know, there's a book uh, by Dr. Uh, Henry Cloud called mm -hmm. um, How People Grow. And if you are, you know, listener, if you're interested in growing, this is a phenomenal book. And one of the first things I actually learned by reading that book is that God designed us for community. And I could go in and talk about it. I'm not going to today. I want to focus on Betty's story, but um, it's a real mind changer. If you are used to being a solo Christian, he will, you know, biblically help you to understand how you were not created uh, for isolation. So yes, Betty, thank you. So be in community and serve. Yeah, uh, Laura, I just want to say uh, one statement that, um, uh, oh my goodness, uh, I'm trying to think of her name now. She's a very famous um, uh, Joyce Meyer. Uh, she says, are you depressed? Uh, she says, are you depressed? She asks the question, are you depressed? 
get up and go serve. Mm. That's your best medicine. Yeah. That's your best medicine. Go serve someone that, you know, is the least of these, right? So I, I think that that's a, a that's wise a Christian inner healing tip for somebody today that's depressed. <laughs> get up in Jesus name and go serve. <laughs> So, you know, one of the things that your book, um, you know, references about is about how, you know, as a young woman, you made choices that weren't the best choices. And now mm -hmm. that we get to be, you know, what the Bible calls, you know, the older ladies, do you mm -hmm. remember that day when you cross the line, you're like, wow, <laughs> I'm, I'm an older lady, which is a blessing. I, I, I don't yes. despise that. I feel yes. like I know what I know because I've lived so many years. Yes. I have things to share because of what I've gone through over so many years. So I, I love being an older woman who's meant to teach the younger women. Um, but what would you say to a younger woman today, especially in this crazy culture, Betty, mm -hmm. where everything mm -hmm. goes, yeah. you know, um, what would you say to a young woman today? Yeah. Well, you know, I come from a broken family, so, um, I, you know, looked for love in all the wrong places. Uh, my self-esteem was very, very low, obviously. I didn't love myself, you know. I obviously didn't even know God. Um, so, you know, there's a saying in Spanish, uh, you know, tell me who you hang around with and I'll tell you who you are. You know, uh, corrupt, and you, you could go to Proverbs, you know, if you, if you keep corrupt company, you're not going to end up in a good place. And, you know, those are some of the things that I did uh, just because I didn't have the wisdom of the Lord. I didn't have the Holy Spirit. I didn't have a relationship with God. So, uh, you know, if, if if we're talking to young people and you don't know God, um, actually God is not boring. <laughs> and you're going to live a life, you know, full and a life of wisdom. Um, you know, have to know as a young woman who you are. You have to know your value. Mm -hmm. You have to know that you are wonderfully and fearfully made. Uh, you know, you have to, uh, you know, hang around with, with people that, uh, you know, want to make a difference in this world, right? We all want to be influencers. We all want to make a difference in this world. And so, you know, again, for younger people or older uh, women and even men, you know, I recommend the same, you know, mentorship. Uh, if you don't know the Lord, give your heart to the Lord, give your life to the Lord. If you know the Lord. Uh, you know, come alongside of people that are more mature than you so you can, you know, grow with them and, um, and just be careful who, who you're with. Just be careful who you're with and value yourself. Value yourself. That's something that I did not do. And I had a very hard time to do because, you know, obviously if, you know, your father doesn't value you, you know, wh why are you going to value yourself, right? The false belief system is I have no value. Exactly. Uh, uh, in, it goes back to, the, again, the scriptures. You know, we find our true value in the Lord and in his word. And, you know, uh, Betty, as you know, I do, um, my passion is, you know, Christ-centered inner healing. Why? Because just like Betty said at the beginning, you know, wherever God has allowed us to be broken, it's also the place that he uses it as the pulpit, you might say, where we're able to reach uh, into people's lives and bring restoration and healing through Christ. Why? Because, you know, it's like they say, you know, it takes one to know one. You know, God gave me a unique uh, ability uh, not to hear everybody's, but to hear many people's pain. And it's hard to explain, except I can hear it <laughs> and I can address it. And um, so, yeah, I, I just, I, I love that you're sensitive to people because of what your background is. And God uses this, you know, to bring, um, healing to hurting hearts. Yeah. And I just want to say to the listener that Betty and I both want to say, whatever you're going through today, God is going to use that too in mm -hmm. the future. He's not hurting you so that you can help other people. I don't believe that. No, I do believe though that God matures us, heals us and shows us our need for him. And then in our time of healing, right, we're able to uh, mentor, you know, like uh, what Betty's talking about other people. So, yeah. Laura, I want to mention something when you talked about, you know, that you're, you have a gift of he inner healing, right? And I also, you know, Renee and I, we do a lot of inner healing prayer. A lot of people, and I'm not saying this judgmental or in any critical way, just I say it with a humble heart. A lot of people in the church are very, are hurting, right? Yes. 
uh, because of divorce, uh, because of abuse, because of, you know, just many things. Uh, I would say also seek, seek your healing. Uh, you know, mm -hmm. counseling is good. Christian counseling is good, but inner healing and deliverance is also very, very important because I was in the church for many years pretending that everything was fine because I'm one of those that, you know, hides everything. I don't want anybody to know. You know, I think it's just because I had a lot of guilt and I had a lot of shame yeah. uh, from my past. Uh, so, you know, your heart is very important to the Lord yeah. and your whole heart is important to the Lord. And, you know, our healing is, is progressive. It's, it's a process, right? It's, it's like you and I are still going through healing. So it's not like, oh, I'm going to go get prayer for healing and that's it. Uh, you know, the Lord knows when, you know, when, uh, when we, we can go through certain, you know, healings in our lives, because some of them are very traumatic, right? Uh, so, but healing is very, very important and, and seek that, um, you know, especially if you're going through some very, very major, you know, ma ma if you've gone through major trauma. So well said, you know, I think a part of where the breakdown is, is that many people um, believe that when they get saved, right, that, and I believe the scripture that says that we become, you know, creations in Christ, and from a spiritual perspective, it's completely true, and our sins are forgiven, yes. but the soul aspect of, of a person, right, their mind, their mm -hmm. will, their personality, right, that's the part where the Holy Spirit begins to do, do want to do an inner work in, and that's where the false belief systems are. Like Betty was saying, she didn't feel like she had any value. Well, right, Betty, you found your value yes. in the word of God, but it was also through this process of healing. So yes, absolutely. We believe that healing starts with Jesus, but we also know that Jesus uses, you know, people and he uses other um, processes and truth to dig down into the heart to release all that toxic, toxic pain and false belief systems. And that's, that's half the work right there, right? It's just helping yeah. people change their mind. So young people, you know, today, as you're listening to Betty, understand the scriptures are telling the truth. She's saying, I lived it right? You have to have good company, you know? Um, it, and that's true. The, and the older we get, that never changes, does it? Yeah, exactly. So, um, okay. So again, a lot of people know you, you know, in all of these professional ways. And I think that there are some people that are like being stirred up in their heart, like, wow, Betty gets me. She understands me. Yes. And it helps us to understand why you've been called to this work, you know, of bringing restoration to the lives of hurting women and men. Um, okay. I'd love to hear about your next book. What's up on about that? Well, um, so uh, it's sort of a continuation of the first one. Um, I want to go ahead and read. Um, the Lord has had me on this scripture uh, for, um, I, I think it's, it's been for quite a while now. Uh, and I'm going to read it out of the Passion Bible. And this is going to bring a lot of hope to people uh, that right now are going through hard times and despair. And it says, it's Ephesians 3.20. It says, never doubt God's mighty power to work in you and accomplish all this. Mm. He will achieve infinitely. Listen to these words, infinitely. These are like, these are powerful words. More than your greatest request. So what request do you have, you know, for Jesus, right? your most unbelievable dream are, you know, have, are you, you can dream with God. You know, I have a dream book. I, I dream with God mm. um, and exceed, exceed your wildest imagination. He will outdo them all, all, all for his miraculous, uh, his miraculous power constantly energizes you. I have here 2018, 2019 and 2020. I've had that scripture and so I said to the Lord, okay, finally, Lord, I have to write a book on Ephesians 3.20 because you've had me on it for three years. And he says, yes, I want you to write a book exceedingly above anything that you could ask or imagine. That's the name of the book. And so the Lord continues to blow my mind, you know, because, you know, uh, my, my, my prayer for the Lord is always, 
it, my prayers have shifted, right? As we mature, it's shifted to, Lord, I want to know your heart. I want to do your will. I want to partner with you. I want to build your kingdom. I want to hear your voice. I want to know your heart, and I want to love others, right? But ab above that, uh, or, or after that, uh, I always say, Lord, I have, I have this dream. I would like to do this, and I would like to do that. And he just continuously, exceedingly, abundantly exceeds what I ask him to. I don't use him as a Santa Claus, you know, but he does say, ask, and it will be given to you. Knock, and the door will be open, and seek me, and you shall find me. And so he just continues to, he continues to, surprise me all the time you know just when I thought oh my god that's not gonna work he goes well that's what you thought but this is not what I'm doing mm -hmm. and so uh, my second book is based on that and it's just because all that I wrote in that little book of that first he has you know it's like uh, the, the the word says you know he will um, replenish a thousand fold you know he will restore a thousand fold that's what he's doing, you know, and in so many ways, you know, in so many ways, in, in wisdom and peace and joy and, you know, wonderful people that I meet, partnerships, um, you know, and so many things and so many things. So um, that's, a, that's a pretty powerful uh, verse for me and the Lord has had me in that verse for quite some time. And I like that translation too, because sometimes we get so familiar with the translation, we don't even really meditate on it anymore. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I think that this is so appropriate to be talking today, especially with the subject that we're talking about, mm -hmm. because a lot of times, you know, we have this, we have this <clears throat> bad habit. Okay. I have this bad <laughs> habit. Okay. Of looking over my shoulders, you know, and, you know, remembering the good old days, you know, and, you know, that is such a, that is such a sinful thing for God's people to do. And the reason, you know, we have to be careful of that is that's what the Israelites did when they were taken out of bondage. They kept saying, Oh, you know, the leeks, the onions, you know, and it's like, yeah, the slavery, remember the slavery. <laughs> But we, you know, the Holy Spirit said something to me that I never forgot. And I, I want to share it with you, Betty, and those that are listening. And it goes right in line with what you're saying. And the Holy Spirit said, if you, the reason you should never look to the future is because you often look without bringing in the presence of the Holy Spirit that will be there. And that is so true, right? We look to the future oftentimes, and unless we bring in Holy Spirit and go, oh yeah, but Holy Spirit's going to be there, and Holy Spirit's going to provide, and he's got all the resources, and he's got all of the people in place, you know, see, then we wouldn't fear for the future. And so I know that there's somebody that you're speaking to today, they're fearing the future. They may, they may be fearing today, mm -hmm. but just like you're saying, Betty, you know, that, that scripture in Ephesians, it's a promise. Yes. And one of the things that I'm in awe about with God is that God is so wise. He knows that when we, you know, pray it, you would say from our lips to his ears, and then he brings it to pass. We are blown away. He gets all the glory. Yes. We keep thanking him and thanking him and thanking him. And it only builds up our faith to keep praying, keep believing, keep trusting. And even as he brings those things to come to pass, it's because of it's part of his plan and his will for our lives and he gets the glory and our childlike faith. I like how you said that he continues to delight me, surprise me. Yeah, we should remain childlike, you know, like that. So any timeline of when that book might be out? Uh, well, I am actually attaching to the end of the book uh, some survivor stories because it's not only, you know, a continuation of my testimony, but what God has done in the lives of these survivors. So I'm hoping by the end of the year, Wow, um, that's soon. And yeah, and no, it's already written. I'm, I, it's already, I've got a, like a chapter and a half and I'm going to take a little time to just finish that. Um, but, uh, you know, if you want to see some testimonies, you know, these are really survivor stories like are 20 times, 50 times more powerful than mine because they have gone, they really have gone through major, major, major trauma. So I'm just waiting on them to, uh, so I've got seven women uh, to send me, you know, seven short stories. So I, it should be out by 2021. 
Isn't it true that a book writes itself to some degree in that you start off with a vision, you know, the Lord gives you creative license. He adds definitely his, you know, he's always leading. And then over time, like new thoughts come, you know, mm -hmm. these divine thoughts, like add these testimonies and stuff. And so in that way, we would say a story writes itself in that, you know, it takes on a bigger life than what we originally thought it was going to do. And God is so good to surprise us like that. Well, I'm imagining it's going to be available on Amazon. Yes. Betty? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. So I'll put that down in the link. And just as a reminder, you know, that you can get Betty's book um, on Amazon and I'll have that down in the link as well. And here's what I want to say to somebody. I would encourage you to get the book today for yourself, but I would definitely encourage you to get a few copies for people that either you know are going through a difficult time or uh, hold on to them because certainly you're going to find people that are going through a difficult time. And it doesn't have to be that they're 55 with only $50. You know, that's just a euphemism. It was her truth, but it's a euphemism for facing the impossible. And yes. Betty's story is one of hope because she reminds us that no matter how impossible our situation is, there is hope. Well, um, one of the things I love to do when I have my guests on, especially if I know them pretty well, is I love to ask them a question about what about them is something that the average person like me wouldn't <laughs> know. So share something with us, Betty. Well, um, my husband and I, we love to walk together and we love to, um, you know, uh, go to places where we can go, you know, walk in, 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 you know, like North Carolina, you know, like the mountains and stuff like that. Uh, I love, both of us are readers. I love to read. I love to read. And one of the things that I love to do, and, you know, uh, it, it's, it's crazy because last year I had a chance to do it one with when it was one of our busiest years that I've had. Uh, Renee and I traveled to the nations. We went to, um, We've been to Pakistan, we've been to Brazil, we've been to uh, Mexico, uh, we have been to, to Africa. And um, I love, I love to go to third world countries because people are so hungry. They're so hungry. Uh, you know, uh, their uh, church there is like three hours, four hours, and nobody's in a hurry. And we have, and, we have seen so many miracles that that is actually one of the things that actually um, I told the Lord, okay, Lord, if, if I see this miracle, I saw a paralytic walk. If I see this, I know that, that you can do a miracle in the lives of survivors of human trafficking. And when I was asked to take the position of executive director, I said, because the Lord allowed me to see that, I'm going to say yes, because if he does miracles in Africa and third world countries, he can do a miracle here in, um, in, in, in the United States, in, in Miami. So I, those are three things that I love to do. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I happen to uh, be married to a man that also loves to do that as well. So, <laughs> that is just, you know, just, um, I don't think I caught the timeline between the time of your, um, you know, being 55 and only having $50, you know, how soon or how long before the Lord, you know, opened up that next chapter of your life? One year, five years? Well, I married Renee, I, I, like I said, I walked out of my house in February and I married in December of that same year. So there, so that's the thing, you know, it's like suddenly, you know, suddenly, like suddenly, suddenly, suddenly I, I, I wasn't going out on dates. I didn't want to be remarried. You know where I met my husband? I met him in our present home, in our prayer room, because I learned, I came to learn about generational curses mm -hmm. and he, he, he jokes around. He says, she didn't, she didn't break generational curses. And then she married me three months later. <laughs> You know, I did not know the answer to that. I'm so glad I asked it because God is the God of the suddenlies. Yes. And, you know, there, God also works in a thing called the fullness of time. And, you know, sometimes, and I do say this 
uh, I've said it before, I'm gonna say it again, some people are out of position. And if you're out of position, you can't be in position for what God has for you next. I'm not advocating divorce. What I'm saying though, is that, you know, sometimes people are in relationships that God never put them there and they are being kept out of their promised land. And you need to trust that no matter what happens, that even if you're 55, you know, and you got $50, you know, your life's not over. In fact, Betty would say, in fact, you're about to step into the promised land. You're about, you know, not to say anything about those years past. There's a lot to be said about it. Children right. to be grateful for, lessons learned, you know, right. healing, you know, community. But at the same time, the suddenly of God, mm -hmm. apart you know, Betty and I don't want you to, you know, leave out. So thank you for that. I didn't know that. And I find that actually very fascinating. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I, 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 the Lord was very, very quick. Uh, you know, after that, we started, we opened Love and Fire Ministries, which is a nonprofit, very small nonprofit that, you know, just gives to the, you know, to the poor, to the orphanage in Africa. Uh, we started when Africa, uh, you know, Renee wrote his book, um, I mean, it was like, like God, it, it, I think it's just because we were in our latter years, just God said, you know, when we love the Lord and we had already done a lot of healing, you know, I'm not, I'm not advocating, oh, you know, get from one relationship to the other, because I wasn't looking, you, you got to do some healing. And I even went through some major healing and deliverance even before I married Renee. Uh, but, uh, you know, I think God just says, okay, you guys are ready, you have, you know, you have pursued me, you had pursued your healing, you love me, I'm going to launch you. And you, we just started doing, you know, things, wonderful things, wonderful things, you know, uh, that the Lord had, had already planned for us. Well, I do think that that is a great um, part to add, you know, that we definitely don't want to tell people we think it's good to leave one relationship and get right into another. But when walking in submission to the Lord, going through deep inner healing and seeking to serve the Lord, those are three things that we become like an arrow in the Lord's, you know, you know, bow. And he yes. can really send us out. And there is something to be said about being older, you know, having gained maturity, mm -hmm. you know, coming through marriages, you know, you know what works, you know what doesn't work. Those things are very valuable to yes. know. About. Yes. So anybody yes. that has spent any time with you and your lovely husband, Rene, they know like, oh yeah, this is a divine, a divine plan of God for sure. Well, share with us, Betty, um, in regards to Glory House, do you need volunteers? And if so, what kind? Yeah, we always need volunteers, right? Nonprofits always need volunteers. Uh, people can go to the website, you know, gloryhouseofmiami.org. Uh, you know, we're, we're always in need of, you know, mentors, um, people that, you know, can use their gifts to for life skills, to teach women life skills. Um, we're, you know, we're really excited because next year we're going to start doing strip club outreach. So people that want to go out to the streets, uh, you know, they can go out with us. Um, God is doing really some amazing things with Glory House. And so uh, there's going to be many, many, you know, this year has been a hard year for, you know, for volunteers just because of COVID. And so I think the Lord has been reestablishing us and reshifting some things. Uh, but we, we, you know, you go to our website and, you know, send us a little, uh, com the, there's a little thing there to fill out, you know, I want to serve and then we'll get a hold of, of the person and they have to fill out an application and we'll interview them. And, you know, people have gifts and you're a lawyer, we need legal, you know, pro bono, uh, you're a dentist, uh, you know, we need pro bono uh, dental work for the ladies. So not necessarily as a mentor, as a life, uh, you know, coach. Uh, you know, babysitters for the kids because we work with survivors with, uh, you know, with kids. So we have, you know, many, many, many needs. Um, and so you could just go to our website there. And there's actually a document that if you open it up, you can actually open it up. It's called Be the Rescue. And it gives you, you know, some ideas so that you can, we, we love to match the, the gift that you have to the, to what you're, where you're going to serve. Because I, I always tell people, I love to put the round peg in the round hole. I don't like to put the round peg in the square hole. Because then that way, uh, the volunteers stay. Because they feel, wow, this is, you know, this is my gifting and I'm using my gift. So, uh, again, they can go to gloryhouseofmiami.org. 
which is our website. Thank you for that. Yes. Well, I'm going to close out in just a few moments and I, I want to give you the last words, uh, Betty. I want you to impart something uh, for you know, whoever the Lord puts it on your heart, you know, for all or for one. Um, but I just want to let those that are listening, if uh, you're new to me, I would love for you to, you know, have an opportunity to learn more about uh, Christian uh, inner healing. Uh, you can go to www.lauradonnie.com. Not hard at all. My last name is Donnie, D-A-H-N-E. And I invite you to come also to my Facebook, my Instagram page, and uh, you can find me there at Laura Donnie. And I have, you know, more in interviews, you know, as like what I'm doing today with um, Betty and uh, also just either um, biblical or inner healing uh, videos that you can learn and grow from. So Betty, I want to turn it over to you and just have you close out in a time of encouragement and impartation. Yeah. Well, uh, to the young, to the older woman, to the, you know, male, right? Uh, if you uh, find yourself at a time of, you know, sadness, depression, desperation, I've been there. Uh, it's not easy. Um, I've been, you know, through divorce. I've been through depression. Um, I have been, you know, in despair. So I don't take that lightly. I don't say, oh, just, you know, you know, get over it. Uh, sometimes it takes a little while, you know, to get over it. But don't isolate. Um, there's people that care about you, that love you. Uh, you know, the body of Christ, you have a family if you are a Christian. If you don't, then I encourage you to find a wonderful, you know, church uh, or Bible study or group of Christians that really can come alongside of you. Um, and God has good plans for you. He has plans to prosper you. He has a future and hope for you. Uh, your life is not over. You know, God took, uh, you know, David, an adulterer. He took uh, Sarah, a 90-year-old woman. I don't, you know, I don't, and, you know, and had a, she had a baby. Uh, you know, Moses, you know, uh, took the, uh, the Egyptians and, you know, got them out of Egypt, you know, and, and uh, uh, Esther, saved a nation and she was just a little jewish you know girl and so uh these are the stories that god continues to do with our lives uh we are just you know little human beings here on earth but god can make great things with us if we yield to him if we give our lives to him and I have to say, you will not regret it. You will never regret giving your life to the Lord. You will never regret following the Lord. If he has done it for me, he will do it for you because he's no respecter of men. And he is wonderful. He wants the best, the best for all of us. He's good all the time. Uh, unfortunately, we live in a fallen world. Unfortunately, we have people that hurt us. Um, unfortunately, we expect, you know, we go through situations that it wasn't even our fault, that we had nothing to do with it. But God has a good life for us. He really, really does. And so I just, you know, exhort you to, you know, to get up, to get up, get up and, uh, and just, uh, you know, move forward, move forward in faith. Uh, and you will see amazing, amazing things uh, that God will do in your life and in the life of the, the people that you love, just like he's done it with Laura and I. So that's my encouragement to our listeners today, Laura. I, I say amen and amen. Thank you, Betty. You, you've inspired me. You've imparted <laughs> something wonderful into me. And to the listener, Betty and I say peace and love. Go in Jesus' name. Thank you again, Betty. I've had a wonderful time with you. Amen. Thank you for having me. My pleasure.